All right, all right. So I'm here with Virgo Husky. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good. Well, first things first, I want to get into how you got your name. How'd you come up with the name Virgo Husky? I got an idea, but, you know, uh, just to clarify. <laughs> well, I think I was, um, at the time, I was just coming up with an Instagram name, a new one, because, you know, it's more like for the, you know, for the kids, mm -hmm. quote unquote, because, you know, I have one for my family. And I always thought that Virgo was a, a really dope name. So um, I used Virgo and then it was another word, I believe it was Trusky. And I think my niece was like Husky or something and we <laughs> put it together and we ran with it. Then eventually, you know, I started doing music again and I just used the name. Uh, now I know you're a native of, of uh, Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina. Um, how did I grow up there influence you as an artist, as a musician? Fayetteville is a military town, but it's very country. Just, um, I guess, with the influence of the country, like big families, people are just themselves. There's, there's a lot of personalities here, and nobody's really trying to be anybody but themselves. So that's like the best thing about where I'm from. For me, it just, you know, it pushes me to, you know, be the best me, you know? Right. But you mentioned personalities. Did that influence you too? Like the big personalities? I'm from a kind of a small country town too uh, myself. So did that kind of influence you, the big personalities? I've always been a little extra. Okay. So <laughs> I've always had, um, I've been dyeing my hair. So I don't even want to, you know, say since, you know. <laughs> um, I've always been different colors. Um, I've always wore like, you know, just different fashion so I've always been weird and thank God you know my grandmother she really like nurtured that especially in the era where it wasn't accepted but she would you know let me you know I'd set clothes on fire poke like holes through the thumbs I used to wear like long sleeve shirts with my that has a lot to do with like my music and, and my style too but also where I'm from is like everybody's just an individual. So I'm from like a very, very unique place, especially my neighborhood. Getting to a little bit more into music, specifically uh, songwriting. Um, what was the first song you wrote and what was it about? Technically the first song I wrote, I was probably like seven. And I think we, um, me and my cousins, we were looking at some other children groups or we wanted to rap. So I wrote, I think I wrote most of it and we all named ourselves like after X-Men. <laughs> and um, we were just talking about like how we, you know, had a dope posse and mm. all this other stuff. And Which that was like basically the first thing that I, I ever wrote as far as like hip hop lyric wise. Okay. Which X-Men were you had the X? Storm. Who of else? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was, the, you know, we're all boys. I was the only one who picked the girl character. Oh, okay. Before. They, yeah. they pick Wolverine and Cyclops. <laughs> yeah. Mm, oh, yeah. Now, in addition to being a songwriter, I, I'm reading your bio. Um, you, you said you also played multiple instruments. You played trumpet and I think uh, trombone, I believe, like brass instruments. How do you think having that sort of train? And then, of course, you studied music in college too. So, how has that kind of classical training? Has it helped and in, in influenced your approach to creating songs and creating music? Oh, wow, that's a great question. And I think um, I think that you're actually the first person to ask me this question. And I've been waiting on this question. So everything to me has become like full circle, especially with me going to, to college. Um, coming up, I started on trombone. So it was real weird the way I started because they told me it was kind of a racial thing. It, it, I didn't pick up on it till like way later on in life. But they told me that my lips were too big to play anything, you know, like a trumpet or something like that. So I started on trombone and I wanted to play trumpet so bad. It was like after my freshman year, I begged my grandmother to get me a trumpet and she got me a trumpet in a beginner's book. And I taught myself how to play trumpet because at that point I only knew how to play bass clef and I only knew, you know, slide position. So, um, you know, so that, um, that made me uh, more, uh, that put me on to like more instruments. Cause once I played trumpet, I began to play euphonium, a little tuba, you know, things of that nature. You know, fast forward, hip hop and, um, you know, I don't want to say secular music, but you know, pop popular music yeah. um, has always been my passion. 
school, like high school and stuff, I went out into the world and I began, you know, going like straightforward in hip hop. And at that age, I believe that I wasn't, um, I think I was still rough around the edges and going back to school collegiately and going back to, um, to writing and arranging. And um, I just seen something that I wrote, like an arrangement that I put together for um, for the March Men. We never used it, but I have like a computer full of arrangements. It really, like, as far as song structure, it, it just brought everything like full circle. You know what I'm saying? I've been studying song structure probably for like the last, you know, million years. That's what I've basically been studying. And it's, um, everything everything ties in with each other and i think that it's specifically helped my ear too okay. I, have, I have a monster of the ear so you think it gives you that kind of foundation to sort of know uh where to go with the song so to speak yeah, i relate to that i mean I took, I took piano lessons when i was a kid and now I, I played in the band for a minute so yeah i get yeah i kind of get how that it what helps play? i played a. Uh, I took piano lessons and I played the saxophone uh, for a while in the band alto sax. Now, initially, when you started in music, you were part of a duo. Uh, I want to say it's Bougie Rock is the name. That's how you say it. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you were under a different name, Twizza. Now, what would you say is the difference between uh, the persona or who Twizza was as an artist and Virgo Husky as an artist? Twizza was more of a person, I, per se. I would say, Virgo Husky is more of a brand. Yeah, Twizzle was also a little bit, you know, more, uh, more, more uh, rough around the edges. Uh, Virgo is a lot more um, calculated. Virgo is a hustler. Um, you mentioned that you mentioned it earlier um, that you took like, a long break from music, uh, an extended break, and then was that like a difficult decision to walk away from music for a while? And and how did you sort of find your way back into it? Um, it was very difficult. I was going through, um, which we all go through, like spiritual you know um it was just like a spiritual battle at that time trying to figure things out and stuff like that and when i seen that certain things weren't going a certain way or you know i just i decided maybe it was time for me to get other things together in my life and um you know also my nieces were watching me so that played a, a really big role in it I did not want to, um, you know, trying to influence them to to do better when I'm not leading by example. So I came home and I went to school and um, I worked on a few things. I developed an artist. I worked with several singers, just about, uh, you know, everybody I went to school with, things of that nature. These are great, great singers. I worked on um, my homeboy's album. He's another um, LGBTQ um hip hop artists. Oh, I marched in the band. I, you know, I did my life went like, you know, other places. But I always had my hand in this. At that point I didn't think that being an artist was probably, you know, the best thing for me. I didn't know if people still wanted to hear my music. Mm. It, you know, so I was just like, you know, whatever. Um, do you think that was uh, a bit of like a self-doubt thing or, or was more so external of like, I just have to take care of some of the support, I get back into it again? I don't know. I was more so just like, you know, living life. I was more family oriented, you know, in the house. I just thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe that part of me is, is you know, maybe that part of me is, you know, no longer, you know? So I, I was moving forward and I was, um, my main focus was writing in the background. That's still my ultimate dream. I'd rather write in the background. You know, uh, if a major artist came and asked me, you know, for anything that's, you know what I'm saying? And we strike up, hey, it is what it is. Right. I'm good, you know? You mentioned songwriting real quick again. Um, who would you say influenced you as a songwriter? Who, who would be like your top your three songwriters, you know? My my top three songwriters would probably be um ooh that's a hard one. <laughs> I like Diane Warren. I couldn't just give a top three because it's gonna be like so many. Okay, just uh, anybody comes to mind. But like that comes to mind, like Missy, Mariah, mm -hmm. 
there there are so many others i can't think but that makes sense when i think about because the music the songs i've heard um they have like a very strong uh melodic style to them like a sing-along quality to them which you think of missy and especially when she first started with the pick a pick all the stuff and then ryan you know uh diane they all write really memorable melodies so that makes sense and we'll get into this too um is it a hood avant-garde is how you describe your your style like your sound so how how do you feel you imbibe that as an artist and, and pinpoint exactly for me what that what that means i got an idea we'll just you know hear from the, the horse's mouth <laughs> I'm hood avant-garde, you know, it's um it's out of the 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 norm is is one of a kind. So basically a little bit like a little bit of ratchet quality, hood quality too, but also sort of um sort of the arty kind of visual side of things. That's more so what I mean. And speaking of music, now you've been you got a project coming up called Slay and Season. So what can people expect from that both um in terms of the sound and also like maybe even visually if you can get into that a bit well most of the visuals are out for slaying season so the visuals that i have up now are um 99 percent from the um from the mix tape i actually started back recording i've only been doing this this you know i started back this year mm -hmm. so i think right now i'm in month seven so it's like okay i've done all of this i've done like so much in these last like six or seven months, it's you know it's it's time for me to to close it out and to move on to the next um, you know to the next um, group of of sounds, and um, you can expect bops. Slang season is bop heavy, you know. Just just a little bit with songwriting. Um... Or, you know, well, a bit of mentioned writing for artists. Um, if, if you could write with another artist or collaborate in any way with, with another artist, what would be like your dream collaborations? I dream collaborations right now. Um, I've always said Rihanna, maybe, um, maybe something with with Missy. Um, of course, like Cardi. Just you know, a lot of the females. I like all of them. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's probably it. A lot of my dream collabs would probably be with like producers. I like to work with Timberland, you know. Okay. So you know that would be like a a big thing. Just do a song with him and see where it goes. I oh I also like to work with like Summer Walker and Lucky Day and you know mm. art. I like to get on a vibe like that. I like I love like you know more so neo soul and uh, and um things of that nature. I think that's like the new Neo soul, if that uh, even makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, in a way, I mean, because in a way, it could, it kind of like, it's new, but it also, at least for Summer Walker, is like a lot of like 90s samples and things like that. So yeah, it's like a mix of both. So yeah, I can see that. So of course, you mentioned Slaying Season. Um, what can they, what can fans expect? What, what can fans fa find you uh, and your music? Oh, my music is, um, it's, streaming on all platforms um you can find me at uh, just look up burgo husky on youtube i'm on instagram at burgo underscore husky that's b-e-r-g-o underscore husky um i am on one word burgo husky that is the tiktok and i think that's most of my social media right there oh it's um at twizzer that's t-w-i-z-z-a music on um on uh twitter yeah i'm sorry about that <laughs> all right um let's last thing any plans i know things are weird right now with you know with the uh delta out in the streets um any plans to uh tour or any plans to perform anywhere or like any or any performance in general not even being out but be like live stream and things like that or I was planning on doing something and I was looking to do more things, you know, but it would have to like go with, you know, the circumstances. It would have to definitely be played safe and, um, and you know, not by ear. It would have to be well organized. So, you know, there, there are, you know, options I'm looking at. Yeah. I mean, I definitely understand that, you know, because it's uh, tricky <laughs> to say the least right now. But yeah, but um, I definitely want to thank you for uh sitting down and talking with me today. It's been great to talk with you. Sure, check, check about it everywhere online. It's because it's streaming everywhere. So uh, thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.